Yes, I uh, was knighted. Uh, in 2017, was yeah, it? Yes, about five, six years ago. I uh, was very surprised, uh, very honored. It was the biggest uh, honor that your, your yes. native country could give you. It's uh, very much appreciated. Uh, and, um, you know, it's uh, who would have thought that um, that a, a, a snot-nosed, uh, disenfranchised, uh, the heavy metal kid trying to fit in and figure it all out uh, would end up in that kind of situation so uh, I wanted well, to honor. It must have been a moment of incredible pride. Yes I was uh, completely caught off guard uh, because it uh, it was I had been asked um, by the Royal Danish Court uh, whether uh, if, if this was bestowed upon me whether I would accept it and I said yes but I didn't really think much more about it. And I was uh, at, a di at a dinner with the uh, Crown Prince of Denmark, uh, Crown Prince uh, Frederick. And um, it uh, all of a sudden, uh, after the main course, there was uh, about 100 people there, <laughs> all uh, Danes of notoriety. And uh, he started talking about a specific Dane of notoriety. I'm sitting there going, like, who, who, who's he talking about? He was talking about you. Uh, yeah, and then uh, a couple, five minutes into the speech, <laughs> I realized he was talking about me, and he was I was uh, about you ready and your to hide. Ready contributions to, to the Ready world. to hide under the table. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and your philanthropic and charitable yes, activities. Yes, so uh, it was uh, very, very uh, appreciated, totally unexpected, uh, but as a Dane um, who flies uh, the Danish flag uh, proudly all over the world, uh, it was a big honor. So thank you for well. That thank up, you yeah. for honoring us with your presence. Thank here. you for uh, coming out here, and thank you for your time. And, and, and thank you for giving some tickets away. And have fun. Have fun. Thank you. The, the whole weekend starts. is about fun. So we got two different shows and four different support acts and all kinds of crazy shenanigans. So thank you for your support, and uh, we'll see everybody out here this weekend. <laughs> New York's Classic Rock, Q1043. New York's Classic Rock, Q1043. Lars Ulrich is with us here this morning on Q104.3. Even though, to be completely honest, as I have the great opportunity to speak with Lars, it's not actually morning. It's That's actually a, yes. a late afternoon, early evening, and it's we are in, well, very is, interesting the, surroundings. Yeah, I think these are called the bowels. Well, the, the bowels of, of Giant Stadium, or MetLife Med Stadium, Med Life, as it's yeah. called. Well, this is yeah. actually, the room that we're in right now is the visiting NFC locker room. Gotcha, Mom. So this is where the Dallas Cowboys, the hated, dreaded Dallas Cowboys, I'll or the even more... Switzerland on that one. Or, or, even, <laughs> or the even more hated, dreaded Philadelphia Eagles... I will stay Switzerland on that one. ...would be here. Well, it's, uh, a, good, yeah. well, it's a good thing to, to be... Uh, Swiss on uh, demand <laughs> right. because you have fans in every state and all over the world and Metallica has just become such a phenomenon I mean when you started the band obviously you hoped for success you know members of every new band do uh, but the level of success that Metallica has attained the uh, the, the commitment that your fans made to you years ago and continue uh, to this very day while at the same time acquiring new fans has just been incredible. Yeah, uh, it's pretty surreal, honestly. Thank you for having me, by the way. Um, uh, 42 years in, um, it's pretty crazy. And it's still, uh, I've said this a thousand times, and people that follow us probably roll their eyes every time the following comes out of my my mouth but it still feels like we're just getting started and it still feels like we are just trying to figure it all out and and we keep threatening um the, at least the people around us uh that we may actually uh turn professional at some point <laughs> soon so it's uh but it's it's crazy uh you know uh the uh dedication and the um the support and and you know from the fans for over the years and obviously it's not all the same fans there's a whole revolving door um and especially in the wake of uh say a phenomena like stranger things last summer uh there's a whole new uh young generation uh that are showing up at all the shows and i'm getting um 
you know, recognized by, you know, 10 year olds on the street. It's like, Ugh, you know, and, and so it's, it's pretty crazy that uh, 42 years into this ride, that that's still happening. And it's pretty crazy. Um, you know, the shows we have here this weekend at MetLife are um, the biggest shows we've ever played in the greater New York, Jersey, tri-state area. So the fact that that keeps uh, sort of continue to grow um, and, you know, certainly post COVID uh, that there's this kind of um, excitement, admiration, appreciation for live music and that everybody's out celebrating uh, life and, and togetherness and so on is, is a crazy thing. And we just, um, you know, for, for a lot of years, uh, you know, in our twenties and thirties, we were, um, full of piss and vinegar, as they say, and, and probably never slowed down long enough to take any of it in as, as one doesn't when one just keeps cruising at that speed. But now, um, uh, in our uh, advanced ages here, <laughs> even well, though we still feel, yeah, we still today feel you're yeah. 42 year partner. That's right. A big birthday. That's right. I, <laughs> I can't wrap my head around James this. Birthday he, today. James is yeah, turned 60 today, but it's, um, it's amazing that, uh, that there's still this love for heavy music and for what we do. And, um, you know, the difference now, you know, compared to say 20, 30 years ago is that we're, we, we, we slow down long enough to take it in and appreciate the love appreciate uh the generosity of of the fans and and the interaction and and how uh you know, you know fortunate we all are to share in music and and to be able to still feel that um we're out here and um and like i said before uh we still connect with fans at the level that we're connecting and and we still have something uh you know music we still have a, a level of of sort of music and a level of I guess uh, intensity and and can go up and and feel that we're delivering the goods to the level that we you know still can share that and feel good about what we're doing. Well, as you were talking about younger people, young fans, you know, and Stranger Things. And, yes. And that phenomenon. Uh, well, you were nine years old. You were nine years old yeah. when you went to the Deep Purple concert. That's right. That changed your life. Who did you go with? Uh, I went with uh, my dad uh -huh. and. Um, I went, uh, there was a tennis tournament in Copenhagen and uh, the players were, uh, it, this was Sunday, so tennis tournaments at that time, they may still do, it started on Monday. This was a Sunday night, I believe, and I think the, the players were given tickets or access to the gig. So went to the gig, this was in February 73. I was nine years old and um, didn't know a lot about heavier music at the time but uh, was very impressed with the uh the spectacle and the the size of it and richie blackmore up there throwing his guitar around and ian gillen's high-pitched screams and ian pace's ferocious drumming and john lord's keyboard and roger glover's you know steady bass playing and so on and the next day after uh, I got out of school. I went down to the local record store and I asked uh, the, which records uh, by Deep Purple they had, and um, they gave me Fireball. So Fireball uh, was the first album that I bought of of any consequence, and that was in '73. And um, still to this day, Deep Purple is one of the most significant um, forces in my sort of musical experience. But well, I uh, can tell by the look on your face that your love for Deep Purple oh, yeah. has it's, never diminished. And, and I can tell you that um, thanks to uh, technology and YouTube and, and you know, social media and all the rest of it, that the, uh, you know, the beauty of the music that you've grown up with, uh, at least for me, but I know I'm not the only one, that the beauty of the music that you have grown up with now being as accessible as it is continuously, um, is something that you can go back and revisit over and over and over again. And for me, when I go back and revisit it, I always get something else out of it, something new, something uh, unexpected. And, you know, I work out a lot in order to, to do what we're doing. And I find myself on a Peloton bike for, you know, 45 minutes, about seven days a week. And I spent a lot of time on YouTube watching videos and, and well, getting can, into all kinds of stuff. And, 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 I, and it'll be 16 hours later and you're still going. Exactly. From one video to but another. I'm, uh, but I can tell you that I, I still do deep dives into deep purple. I still mm -hmm. do, uh, in the last few months I'll put on, you know, made in Japan and 
check out the guitar solo in Child in Time for the 9,000th time or but whatever. But when you were talking about going to that concert, I'm sitting here right next to you looking at you. The nine-year-old boy was on your face. <laughs> and <laughs> you. now there are young kids who are experiencing you yes. and your music for the first time. And I was thinking that maybe it was uh, your knowledge of that that gave you the idea, which is pretty unheard of, to sell reduced price tickets <laughs> to your shows for we, kids. Yes, yes, we're uh, trying to encourage kids uh, to come uh, and and be a part of this, and we're trying to make it, uh, to do what we can to make it easier for everybody across all the different uh, economic um yeah, economic, you know, levels, and and so obviously kids have a different reality, and and I'm not saying we've cracked the problem or solved it, but we're trying, and um, we want obviously um, a Metallica concert, a Metallica experience, to be something that should be uh, reasonably attainable for everybody um, uh, across all different ages uh, and so on, all de different demographics. Um, yeah, but I've never heard of a. Of a Children's we're trying. And listen, we're trying. I mean, show. you know, we, we get some pushback here and there uh, against the idea. conventions, but uh, we're we're trying, and um, it it has been pretty crazy. Uh, just circling back, you know, I'm not just sort of name checking the Stranger Things phenomena. It, it really has been crazy, um, but also, you know, social media in general. Uh, Saying the last five, eight, ten years, um, how many more younger people are showing up at our gigs. Uh, and so when we play in Latin America, when we play in Europe, we play in the, you know, the, the former East Eastern Europe. Uh, there are in countries, you know, you go to Brazil, you go to Argentina, you play Poland, Czech Republic, so on and so forth. There are so many young people and a, a big part of it has to do with social media and 12, 14 year olds getting a chance to go to concerts for the first time. So it's it's amazing to be able to sit here 42 years later and with James turning 60 today, who would have thought that we would be able to sit here and go, you know, maybe a third to half of the audiences are seeing Metallica for the first time or, uh, you know, what it, under 18, whatever and statistic you want to put to it. who would have, have known it. that the nine year old little boy right. uh, from Denmark inducted Deep Purple into the Rock that's and Roll right. Hall of Fame. That's right, yeah. I mean, that's pretty incredible. And Lars, besides the fact that you have reduced <laughs> price tickets You're gonna for kids. You're going to get me mi misty-eyed here. You also, <laughs> okay. Lars, you, you, you also uh, donate a portion of the price of each ticket during the entire tour to your foundation. Yes, we do. Which then grants 100% of the money that's yes. raised. Yes, Money that comes from you, your bandmates, some friends of yours that you probably hit up for a few bucks and then of course yep. a percentage of the ticket sales yes and you do an incredible amount of work with it i mean there's you know emergency disaster relief and stuff like that yep. but it's the educational stuff that you do that i found really very thank very you interesting. No, thank you we've uh we're about uh, seven years into this endeavor. Uh, you're working we've, with 41 colleges now. Yeah, so we're about seven years into the endeavor of, 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 of having our foundation, and um, we, we went public. You know, we, we were giving back, but more under the radar up till 2016 when we, we launched our foundation. It's and called the All Within My Hands. All Within My Hands, yes, and we're very proud of the work that we help facilitate, obviously through the donations of, like you're saying, uh, you know, from ticket buying, ticket buying public, and and from our uh, benefits, where people come and write checks and 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 bid on things and so on. But you know, a hundred percent of every dollar that goes in, that comes in, goes back out. We take care of of all the overhead and all the expenses. That's our part. That's our contribution to that. We work with disaster relief, you say, but the core of the organization. Is uh, is education in in blue collar trades? In blue collar trades, uh, something that uh, I would say respectfully maybe gets overlooked. Uh, is maybe not uh, as sexy 
or as fun. Um, well, they're good you know, jobs. For, for a lot, for, for, for a lot of... Uh, they're good jobs. They pay well. And exactly. it's important. The work well, is well, I was important. Gonna say, so it, Try it, to make the world go round and, and operate without people who know how to yes, do things. And, yeah, so my point was that for, for a lot of charities, uh, doing blue-collar stuff is maybe not something that you know a lot of people get involved in and we saw an opening there uh because we feel that so many of our fans you know come from that background and can relate to that part of it and so we uh are very proud of the work uh that our whole organization is doing and the partners that we have out there and um it's incredible uh the lives that it touch and and the difference that it makes in people's lives and um it's it's great that the uh, and I'm so proud of the fact that the heavy metal community, the hard rock community, who sometimes is not maybe uh, that appreciated for for what it does when it bonds together, um, and I think it's great that the hard rockers uh, everywhere can roll up their sleeves and get involved in their own in their own communities and get involved with things like our organization and really make a difference to people like everybody that's at the receiving end of these blue collar scholarships. Lars Ulrich is with us on Q104.3 and we'll be right back. Lars, it's here. The day is here. Well, it's actually tomorrow, yes. uh, but still uh, less than 24 hours from now as we speak here at MetLife Stadium, uh, the, the crowd will be here in attendance. Uh, the uh, first of the uh, supporting acts will be preparing to go on stage. And after months and months and months of, of preparation, of hard work, of anticipation, uh, it all begins. The big tour. The <laughs> here we go. <laughs> the Strap and, yourselves and, in. And it starts here. <laughs> it right, starts right, right here. here. In our metropolitan area, the That's M72 right. World Tour. That's right. Yeah. So, we, yeah, we, um, we're starting in America. We've just had a couple, four or five weeks off. We were in Europe, uh, did a bunch of stuff in Europe for about three months since April. Uh, but the North American run starts uh, right here in the metropolitan area, as you and say. What a what, what an unusual idea and a great one doing two shows uh, in the yes. city with with distinct set lists, yes. lists and and also the supporting and opening acts that's also being different everything everything is every everything everything each night is different from the the set list uh, 100% different each night the support acts 100% different uh, Everything that's going to, uh, on, you know, all around, like even the house music, mm -hmm. you're not going to hear the same house music song, uh, you know, on either night. The only thing that's the same from uh, night to night musically is uh, our intro tape. And we actually, there was a, a, a quick debate about whether we should even change our intro tape, but we come out to... Um, an ACDC song called uh, It's a Long Way to the Top, which has been our sort of walk-on music for a couple of decades, and then um, Ennio Morricone's Ecstasy of Gold. And those two uh, are the same from each night, simply for w one reason only, which is that um, we figured that if if we got a different walk-on song, maybe people that are buying drinks or getting shirts or going to the bathroom or hanging out with their friends wouldn't know that you were coming. Wouldn't on. know that we were coming <laughs> on. So we figured that maybe it would be a disservice to our fans if all of a sudden there was a different walk-on song. Well, Lars was on site on 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 evening well, two, and well, people would miss the Lars, first twenty with the, minutes with the supporting acts. Yes, um, often audiences are unappreciative of supporting acts. Um, often audiences don't even bother taking their seats while the supporting acts are there. You have on your tour supporting acts that have their own fan bases and that can easily fill arenas as headliners. That's also something. That's yeah, very no, we we uh, we try. Uh, everybody that's playing with us the next couple of days are friends of ours. Uh, obviously, uh, we've known the boys in Pantera for about 400 years. And uh, we're uh, so grateful that they're out here. And, um, you know, Mammoth, uh, you know, Wolfgang Van Halen's project, uh, he was with us in Europe uh, for a couple of months. Uh, incredible to, to have him out. And obviously, uh, 
there's no end to the legacy that that he represents uh and, and you know so we try to have um people that uh that we have relationships with people that we respect people that we feel uh proud to share with our fans and with our audiences and um it's really exciting to have different support acts on each day and like i said give our fans an opportunity to have two completely different shows it goes back to uh some festivals uh, the idea goes back to some festivals from uh a couple three years four years ago three four years ago right um uh, in it, it was actually supposed to be in the the summer of the the first summer of the pandemic in twenty. Um, we uh, agreed to do uh, about half a dozen festivals with um, with the idea that we would bookend Friday and Sunday, and so we would play a headline set on Friday and a headline set on Sunday that would be two different nights, and then somebody else playing on Saturday, and that would be the festival. And then obviously the pandemic came, and then uh, that whole thing got thrown. And people uh, who can't see you live on this tour will have an opportunity to see you in movie theaters around the country. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So be the yeah. show from Arlington, Texas, at AT and T Stadium. That's right. Yeah. And we have uh, some tickets we're going to give away right well, now. Well, very cool. Thank as you. a matter of fact, All the twenty right. fifth caller. The twenty fifth caller. Yeah, the twenty fifth caller. At Does that mean somebody's counting the first twenty yes, four? They do. They do. They just get hung they up do. on. Brandon will be counting. That's Brandon okay. will be counting. It's okay. it's triple eight eight seven two one zero four three. Call okay. us. Right. I now. love it. Old school. We have uh, we have uh, uh, another pair uh, for the uh, well, live you, broadcast, yeah. so they'll be experiencing the show live as it's happening. That's incredible. Except they'll be in an air conditioned theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, and also uh, our winner will qualify for the grand prize drawing, which takes place in about half an hour, and that will be tickets uh, to see Metallica. That's right. Right here well, thank at you. MetLife Stadium. Yeah. Uh, one other thing I wanted yes, to mention sir. to you before they uh, take you on to wherever it is that you're going <laughs> next. I know you have a rehearsal tonight, don't you? Yes, we have. Uh, we've been rehearsing for the last couple of days here, and um, we're actually sound checking tonight also. Uh, so we've so got that's the big one. You have a, there are a lot of trucks parked out in the parking lot. You <laughs> you employ a lot of people. You are responsible for a lot of families. There are some uh, and, incredible and their people. livelihoods. There you are see, a, a lot of band, people. Yes, you start a band with a few people, and then later on down the road, <laughs> hundreds of families yeah. depend upon you for their livelihood. Yeah, no, it's it's. <laughs> there are so many great people out here, uh, giving their time and and helping out. And uh, I believe Beyonce was in here playing a few shows uh, or last weekend. So they have what's called uh, what is it an accelerated load in something like that <laughs> uh and um so they i think the crews have been working like overtime and uh, so there's been a lot of great people here uh, from monday i think we took over the venue monday afternoon monday evening and so it's been um full force uh and uh it it's just crazy uh they've been getting all this stuff up uh in about three days well lars founder master drummer of metallica uh, the British do it a little differently. Maybe there's a little more pomp and circumstance in their world, but <laughs> you're a Danish knight. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, that will. Uh, you are. Yes, you're a knight. I, yeah, I. Um, the Queen I, of Denmark. I, I, yes, I uh, was knighted uh, in 2017. Was yeah, it? Yes, so about five, six years ago. Uh, was very surprised. Uh, very honored. It was the biggest uh, honor that your your yes. native country could give you it's uh very much appreciated uh and um you know it's uh who would have thought that um that a the, the snot-nosed uh disenfranchised uh, the heavy metal kid trying to fit in and figure it all out uh would end up in that kind of situation so uh one well, of the honor must have been a moment of incredible pride yes i was uh completely caught off guard uh, because it uh, it was, I had been asked um, by the Royal Danish Court uh, whether uh, if if this was bestowed upon me, whether I would accept it, and I said yes, but I didn't really think much more about it. And I was uh, at a di at a dinner with the uh, Crown Prince of Denmark, uh, Crown Prince uh, Frederick, and. Um, it uh, all of a sudden, uh, after the main course, there was a 
about a hundred people there, <laughs> all uh, Danes of notoriety. And uh, he started talking about a specific Dane of notoriety. And I'm sitting there going, like, who, who, who's he talking about? He was talking about you. Uh, yeah, and then uh, a couple, five minutes into the speech, <laughs> I realized he was talking about me. And he was I was talking uh, about you ready and your to artistic hide, ready contributions to the Ready world. to hide under the table. And, <laughs> and your philanthropic and charitable yes, activities. Yes, so... Uh, it was uh, very, very uh, appreciated, totally unexpected, uh, but as a Dane um, who flies uh, the Danish flag uh, proudly all over the world, uh, it was a big honor. So thank you for Well, thank you here. for honoring us with your presence thank here. Thank you for uh, coming out here, and thank you for your time. And, and, and thank you for giving some tickets away. And have fun. Have fun. Thank you. The, the whole weekend starts. is about fun. So we got two different shows, and four different support acts and all kinds of crazy shenanigans so thank you for your support and we'll see everybody out here this weekend new york's classic rock q1043 new york's classic rock q1043 lars ulrich is with us here this morning on q104.3 even though to be completely honest as I have the great opportunity to speak with Lars. It's not actually morning. It's That's actually a, yes. uh, late afternoon, early evening, and it's we are a, in, well, very is, interesting the, surroundings. Yeah, I think these are called the bowels. Well, the, the bowels of, of Giant Stadium or MetLife Med 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 as it's yeah. called. Well, this is yeah. actually the room that we're in right now is the visiting NFC locker room. Gotcha, Mom. So this is where the Dallas Cowboys the hated dreaded Dallas Cowboys I'll or the even more Switzerland on that one or, or, even, <laughs> or the even more hated dreaded Philadelphia Eagles I will stay Switzerland on that one would be here well it's, uh, a, good, yeah. well, it's a good thing to, to be uh, Swiss on uh, demand <laughs> <Right. laughs> because you have fans in every state and all over the world and Metallica has just become such a phenomenon i mean when you started the band obviously you hoped for success you know members of every new band do uh, but the level of success that metallica has attained the uh the the commitment that your fans made to you years ago and continue uh to this very day while at the same time acquiring new fans has just been incredible yeah uh it's pretty surreal, honestly. Thank you for having me, by the way. Um, uh, 42 years in, um, it's pretty crazy. And it's still, uh, I've said this a thousand times, and people that follow us probably roll their eyes every time the following comes out of my, my mouth. But it still feels like we're just getting started, and it still feels like we are just trying to figure it all out, and, and we keep threatening um, the, at least the people around us. Uh, that we may actually uh turn professional at some point <laughs> soon so it's uh but it's it's crazy uh you know uh the uh dedication and the um the support and and you know from the fans for over the years and obviously it's not all the same fans there's a whole revolving door um and especially in the wake of uh say a phenomena like stranger things last summer uh there's a whole new uh, young generation uh, that are showing up at all the shows and I'm getting um, you know recognized by you know 10 year olds on the street it's like Ugh, you know and and so it's it's pretty crazy that uh, 42 years into this ride that that's still happening and it's pretty crazy um, you know the shows we have here this weekend at MetLife are um, the biggest shows we've ever played in the greater New York Jersey tri-state area so the fact that that keeps uh sort of continue to grow um and you know certainly post covid uh that there's this kind of um excitement admiration appreciation for live music and that everybody's out celebrating uh life and and togetherness and so on is is a crazy thing and we just um you know for for a lot of years uh you know in our 20s and 30s we were um full of piss and vinegar as they say and and probably never slowed down long enough to take any of it in as as one doesn't when one just keeps cruising at that speed but now um 
uh, in our uh, advanced ages here. <laughs> Even well, though today we still you're feel, yeah, we still today feel you're yeah. 42 year partner. That's celebrates right. Celebrates a big birthday. That's right. I, <laughs> I can't wrap my head around James this. Birthday he, today. James is yeah, turned 60 today. But it's um, it's amazing that uh, that there's still this love for heavy music and for what we do and. Um, you know the difference now you know compared to say 20 30 years ago is that we're, we 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 slow down long enough to take it in and appreciate the love appreciate uh the generosity of of the fans and and the interaction and and how uh you know you know fortunate we all are to share in music and and to be able to still feel that um we're out here and um and like i said before uh we still connect with fans at the level that we're connecting and and we still have something uh you know music we still have a, a level of of sort of music and a level of, of i guess uh intensity and and can go up and and feel that we're delivering the goods to the level that we you know still can share that and feel good about what we're doing well as you were talking about younger people young fans you know and stranger things and yes and that phenomenon uh, well you were nine years old you were nine years old yeah. when you went to the Deep Purple concert. That's right. That changed your life. Who did you go with? Uh, I went with uh, my dad, uh -huh. and um, I went. Uh, there was a tennis tournament in Copenhagen, and uh, the players were. Uh, it, this was Sunday, so tennis tournaments. At that time, they may still do. It started on Monday. This was a Sunday night, I believe, and I think the the players were given tickets or access to the gig. So went to the gig. This was in February '73. I was nine years old and um, didn't know a lot about heavier music at the time, but uh, was very impressed with the uh, the spectacle and the the size of it. And Richie Blackmore up there throwing his guitar around, and Ian Gillan's high pitched screams, and Ian Pace's ferocious drumming, and John Lord's keyboard, and Roger Glover's you know steady bass playing, and so on. And the next day after. Uh, I got out of school. I went down to the local record store and I asked uh, the, which records uh, by Deep Purple they had, and um, they gave me Fireball. So Fireball uh, was the first album that I bought of of any consequence, and that was in '73. And um, still to this day, Deep Purple is one of the most significant um, forces in my sort of musical experience. But well, I uh, can tell by the look on your face. That your love for Deep Purple oh, yeah. has it's, never diminished, and, and I can tell you that, um, thanks to uh, technology and YouTube and and you know social media and all the rest of it, that the uh, uh, you know the beauty of the music that you've grown up with, uh, at least for me, but I know I'm not the only one. That the beauty of the music that you have grown up with, now being as accessible as it is continuously. Um, is something that you can go back and revisit over and over and over again. And for me, when I go back and revisit it, I always get something else out of it, something new, something uh, unexpected. And, you know, I work out a lot in order to, to do what we're doing. And I find myself on a Peloton bike for, you know, 45 minutes, about seven days a week. And I spent a lot of time on YouTube watching videos and, and well, getting can, into all kinds of stuff. And, 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 and I, it'll be 16 hours later and you're still going from exactly, one video to another. Exactly, uh, but I can tell you that I, I still do deep dives into Deep Purple. I still mm. do, uh, in the last few months, I'll put on, you know, Made in Japan and check out the guitar solo in Child in Time for the 9,000th time or but whatever. But when you were talking about going to that concert, I'm sitting here right next to you looking at you. The nine-year-old boy was on your face. <laughs> and you. now there are young kids who are experiencing you yes. and your music for the first time. And I was thinking that maybe it was uh, your knowledge of that that gave you the idea, which is pretty unheard of, to sell reduced price tickets <laughs> to your shows for we, kids. Yes, yes, we're uh, trying to encourage kids uh, to come uh, and and be a part of this, and we're trying to make it uh, to do what we can to make it easier for everybody across all the different.